in in church as far as with everybody. I know she's in children's church, but praise the Lord. Well, guys, how many people have come for God's word today? Have you covered that word? Praise the Lord. Well, today, I don't have an object lesson. I want to thank God, my wife. Remember the object lesson I gave last week? She cleaned that out for me. Isn't that pretty cool? That's awesome. You know, she, she, and I didn't ask her. I was out doing chores, and I looked over, and I saw her cleaning it all out. I'm thinking, wow, I'm a blessed man. But I don't have an object lesson today for you. But guys, in all seriousness, when I was uh, seeking the Lord for today's message, I, um, God began to lay on my heart a part two for the need to rest. It was not my initial plan to have two parts. Um, and I know some of you said, Pastor, last week you gave us so much to think about. I said, well, God gave you so much to think about, so much to chew on when it comes to the necessity of resting. But as I began to seek the Lord and began to open my Bible over here is usually where I gather uh, to, um, to pray. And God began to lay on my heart the warning to a believer when they choose not to enter the rest, a Sabbath's rest, that God offers. And you might be thinking, well, here he goes. He's going back to the Old Testament. No, I'm not. No. The Scripture declares, which we're about to hear, where God in the New Testament, in the book of Hebrews, declares for his children to enter the rest that is found in him. And if we choose not to, that the same fate that hit the Hebrew people as they were in the wilderness for 40 years could come upon a new covenant or a New Testament believer, and therefore there be stagnation, decay, out of the will of God, fatigue, sickness, frustration, not being able to be equipped because we're so tired to live in these last days, and therefore we may return to the things of the world even by accident. But we're going to get serious today, again. And I believe and pray that you guys will receive this as, not as a warning from God, but just as advice from God, because he knows what is best, and how important it is for us as believers to rest, and to take, for, take serious what we learned last week in the message about the gift of rest. If you guys would be so kind as to stand with me for the reading of God's Word. Hebrews chapter 4, and I'm going to be reading the first 11 verses. Hebrews chapter 4, beginning with verse 1, and I'll be reading from the New King James Version of the Bible. Therefore, since a promise remains of entering his rest, let us, let us fear, lest any of you seem to have comforts come short of it, for indeed, the gospel was preached to us as well as to them. But the word which they heard did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in those who heard it. For we who have believed to do enter that rest, as he said, so I swore in my wrath, they shall not enter my rest. Although the works were finished from the foundation of the world, for he has spoken in a certain place of the seventh day in this way. And God rested on the seventh day from all his works. And again, in this place, they shall not enter my rest. Since therefore it remains that some must enter it, and those whom it was first preached did not enter because of disobedience. Again, he designates a certain day, saying in David, Today, after such a long time as it has been said, Today, if you will hear his voice, do not harden your hearts. For if, Josh, for if Joshua had given them rest, then he would not afterward have spoken of another day. There remains, therefore, a rest for the people of God. For he who has entered his rest has himself also ceased from his works as God did from his. Let us, therefore, be diligent to enter that rest. Least anyone fall according to the same example of disobedience. Father God, may you add a blessing to the reading of your word. And Lord, today may you use my mouth to be your voice. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. 
Guys, I'm also going to refer to, I have a Bible that my wife got me years ago with five translations in it. I'm not going to read all five, but I am going to read later on just from the Amplified and the NIV when it comes to the importance of this verse because the New King James, I understand it, and for some folks the poetry in it might um, might be a little confusing. And so rather than try to break down the poetic piece, um, because it is very similar to the King James when it comes to this portion of Scripture, usually it's easier to understand in New King James since we don't, pre- we don't speak in the Queen's English uh, anymore. But I am, because this is very important as a prophetic warning or prophetic advice uh, from the Lord and His Word to us, I believe, want to make sure that there's no translation mix-up or understanding mix up because of the translation. And so today, guys, we're looking at the gift of rest, part two. We are looking at this piece that is so, so important uh, to us here today, especially if you remember what we talked about last week. Now, some of you came and said, Pastor, I took an inventory and I realized I didn't have any rock in that jar with rest as a priority. I realized that my life looked like that that wet sand, that rock that was big, or not big, but was small, and I kept putting more and more stuff into my week, and I was just constantly going, and I'm having different health issues, and I realized that I had not made rest a priority. Others of you, you know, you're still chewing on it. You're still thinking about it, just like a person does when we preach on stewardship or we preach on giving. Most people don't hear a sermon on tithing the first week and start tithing. Uh, Most people, they have to chew on it, pray on it, search the scriptures, you know, get other counsel and then decide to tithe, uh, you know, as you mature in your faith. Most don't just immediately start. Okay, well, it's the same way with rest. But as God began to just minister to me in my own life as well as, as, the, as your lives, and God began to show that there are many who are struggling with anxiety and fatigue and sickness and disease and mental health issues simply because you're exhausted. And our body shows us these things. And then God began to show me Hebrews chapter 4 in a way that I had never read or looked at before. And that is as a prophetic warning to the church. A pastor's number one job, of course, is to preach the word. His second job is to equip the saints. And his third job is to protect the flock. I believe that's the top three priorities of a pastor. But when it comes to equipping the saints, God began to lay on my heart. You know, Justin, it's going to be hard for you to equip the saints if the saints that you're trying to equip are exhausted. There's going to be, you, you can't squeeze blood out of a turnip. You can't, you can't, if someone's exhausted, you can't go anymore. If someone's rest is not a priority, when it comes to the signs of the times unfolding in these last days, as we see happening all around us. We're eventually going to get fatigued. And as I said last week, just as a child, we do it as adults too. When we get tired and exhausted, we complain, we lose patience, and we just want to sit home, put the TV on, get a big bag of Doritos, and veg out. That's basically what we want to do. Okay? Any strength that we do have, it's called going to work and filling in all these other places. I got to run here. I got to run there. My kids got this tonight. Tomorrow night they got that. Wednesday night they got church. Thursday night they got football. Friday, you know, they've got a, uh, well, they don't have football this year. They have soccer. Uh, You know, Friday I've got to take my daughter here. I'm going all over the place and I'm just exhausted. But we're going to see in Hebrews 4, New Testament. Guys, this isn't Leviticus 13. This isn't where God was laying out over 150 covenants and 150 laws that deal with keeping the Sabbath and resting and keeping it holy. This is New Testament. This is where we're, this is where we always say, I hear this, well, Jesus is the Sabbath. He fulfilled the Sabbath. It's not important anymore. Wrong. And I'm going to define that today. And the writer of Hebrews defined it 2,000 years ago, that if we don't understand this concept of why rest is important, God will not be able to use us to our, his fullest extent. We will not be in the will of God if we become weary in well-doing. We will not be able to endure to the end and be saved 
because we'll lose patience to do so. The writer of Hebrews in chapter 4 of verse 1, Therefore, since a promise remains of entering his rest, the promise remains. What's that mean? After Christ, it still remains. Entering the rest that is found in God. Entering the rest that is found in Jesus Christ. But even more so, if you look this up in the Greek, you will find where rest here throughout this chapter deals with a Sabbath's rest. Wow. It remains even in the New Testament. And we're going to see here where the writer of Hebrews is going to challenge us to do that just as God rested on the seventh day. Just as, as God himself took a day to reprieve. And remember, as Jesus said last week in Mark 2, the Sabbath is for us. It's a gift for us, not for God. It is for us. Praise the Lord. Since a promise remains of entering his rest, let us fear, lest any of you seem to come short of it. If we come short of it, we make the same mistake that the Israelites made. If we come short of resting and we're like that rock with the little rocks and with the sand and with the water that we did last week in the object lesson, if that is us, we come short of resting in the Lord. The NIV says this, Therefore, since the promise of entering his rest still stands, let us be careful that none of you be found to have fallen short of it. We have to be careful. We have to be a steward according to the NIV. We have to be a steward. We cannot, we have to have a reverence for God and the importance of rest that's found in the Lord. Church, I believe fully as I stand behind this pulpit, the signs of the times are going to intensify in these last days. We have not seen the worst. Okay? In more ways than one. Even Friday, I heard where the, out in California, the first judge at the, at the basic level was just overturned about John MacArthur and churches and worshiping and returning to church and to worship and to be able to sing and be able to pray while the circuit court or the appellate court overturned the lower court. Okay, and so when we were re what we were rejoicing about a month ago has now been overturned. So Californians are now sitting home with, um, you know, if they're in, for inside as far as singing, praying, all that kind of big news on Friday if you follow the story. Okay, and so there's going to be more things. We see fires burning. We see droughts. We see civil unrest. Just yesterday, police officers being killed, as well as, you know, fellow Americans in the middle of killing one another, you know, in the war zones that we call Chicago and Portland, Oregon. But we, as we live in these times, we must be careful, church not to fall short of this Sabbath day rest. This promise that is found in God. God needs us strong and vibrant so we can do his will. We can't do that if we're weary. We can't do that if our jar is filled with wet sand and we're cramming more stuff in there, earthly stuff, or stuff even that we enjoy at the cost of forgetting to rest. We can't afford to burn out at this time. We can't afford to burn out in these last days. Verse number two, for indeed the gospel was preached to us as well as to them. But the word which they heard did not profit them and not being mixed with faith in those who heard it. That is the part I wanted. These two verses especially wanted to look to the NIV or the Amplified, but I think the NIV will suffice because there's some poetry in there, and sometimes it's hard to mix up who the audience is, or it's easy to mix up who the audience is. Verse 2 from the NIV says this, For we also, having had the gospel preached to us, just as they did, but the message they heard was of no value to them, because those who heard did not combine it with faith. Last week, you heard the same message that the writer of Hebrews was talking about, how the rest, a Sabbath rest is huge, how we rest in the Lord, those that are weak and heavy laden, how we take advantage of this gift because God created a Sabbath rest for us. We heard the same message. We heard that message. However, will we view it as valuable, causing us to change, or will we not combine that message with our faith? 
meaning we let it go in one ear and out the other, meaning we keep working, we keep being busy, we keep adding more to the plate, more and more and more to where we become so busy, we become distracted by the things of heaven, by the things that really matter in our culture today. If you're either going, you're either busy or you're lazy, there's no in between. Well, we can be so caught up in our busyness that we make the same mistake that the lazy person does, which is what? The will of God is not being carried out. That's what the writer of Hebrews is saying here. We not only do we fall short of not understanding the Sabbath rest and who that is, that where that is found in Christ, but the message carries no value and therefore it does not combine with our faith, which calls us to mature. Wow. Notice the writer of Hebrews called this as part of the gospel. How many of you think about rest as being part of the gospel? We don't. We don't think about rest as part of the gospel. We think of salvation. Maybe we think of uh, laying hands on the sick. Usually it's simply evangelistic. Well, rest is a part of the gospel. But will we put it into action? Will we take hold of it? Our bodies are telling us as a society, the third fastest growing cause of death, only behind diabetes and addiction, is despair, which is basically caused by fatigue and burnout. Fastest growing. Guys, we can only have 24 hours in a day. Same as the president. We can only have seven days in a week. But what are we doing? What are our priorities? Remember the big rocks in the jar last week? Does one of them say rest? Or do we have to do more and more? And well, if I don't do something, if I don't do something, if I rest, people are going to think I'm the laziest person in the world. Well, you know what? Let them think what they want. Let them think that while they're struggling with anxiety, depression, marriage is in trouble, spend no time with their kids, kids feel isolated and broken, their bills are going like crazy, and they're struggling physically themselves. Let them think that while you are at peace while you were in the will of God because you know how to use your schedule. Show me your schedule and I'll show you your priorities. Do you schedule times for your kids or are you so busy you can't, there's no time to show how much your kids mean. Very few people are eating dinner at the table every night together. Very, show me your schedule and I'll show you your priorities. Is rest somewhere in there? Is that Sabbath rest somewhere in there? Well, I'll rest up when I can. Well, if you don't put it in your schedule, you'll never rest up. I'll see you when you're sick. I'll see you when your health finally hits a brick wall. I'm sure there are a lot of folks here over the age of 55 who would love to go back and say, oh, I wish I had treated my body different. Because you pay for it later. You pay for it later. You pay for it later. Verse number three, for we who have believed do enter that rest. As he has said, so I swore in my wrath, they shall not enter my rest. Or the NIV says it this way. Now we who have believed enter the, that rest just as God said. So I declare on an oath in my anger, they shall never enter my rest. So those that believe and those that have reference for a Sabbath day's rest, those that are telling their schedule what is important and rest is a part of that, those that have heard the word and they have combined it with their faith and they've increased, they will enter the rest of God. But those who do not, God in his oath or God in his wrath, whatever translation you want to look at, God in his anger says, hey, they shall never enter that rest. So when you look about it, and God, and the writer of Hebrews is talking to believers in the new covenant. He's talking to the church, all right? So the more, I wish that maybe I should have kept that thing for one more week. It would have really looked nasty a week later. But if you look and that's your life with rest is not a priority, with that wet sand and all them small rocks and then the pebbles, you know, and all that kind of stuff on top of your priorities, which are your family and all those kinds of things, and you're trying to fit them in there, and God says, you'll never enter my rest keeping up with that schedule. What does that mean? No peace. Today, Pastor Joe came and prayed with me. And I was so moved because he began to pray, God, give him peace. And I took that as God, bring rest to my soul. Bring rest to my physical body. Bring rest to my life. Lord, I rest in you. 
Because, church, if we are, if we, if God is swearing in his wrath or in his anger that we're not going to find rest in him because we're being disobedient to the Sabbath day rest, what are we doing? You know, what are we doing? How many of you remember the movie Planes, Trains, and Automobiles? The clean version. The other version gets kind of nasty. But John Candy, Steve Martin, two of my favorites in the 80s when that thing came out. But I remember toward the end of the movie, you know, John Candy takes the wheel to drive. All right? And he pulls out onto the interstate, and he's heading west, but he's heading west on the eastbound lane. And remember, he's driving along in the Ray Charles song, and he's dancing and singing John Candy being John Candy. Hilarious. And there's two big rigs heading his way. And then Steve Martin wakes up because he hears the horns and starts shaking his arm, and he starts shouting, you know, you're going the wrong way. You're going the wrong way. Of course, John Candy, you know, whatever the song was, the Ray Charles, Georgia. I think he was singing Georgia on my mind, you know. And so there he is. And then, he, then his eyes get big as bowling balls, and he drives through the two rigs, and the car comes out completely demolished on the other side. And they're driving down the road without a hood, without a roof, you know, no doors on the side, and, you know, just driving along. But I'm here to tell you, if a Sabbath day rest is not a priority, I don't care how hard you work. The bottom line is, in God's eyes, you're going the wrong way. The doctor will say, you've got to slow down. But the first question, every time I go in, usually the first question, after how you doing, usually the next question is, how are you sleeping? Well, and then the next thing you know, you, you realize where the conversation is going. And the doc may say, well, you've got to make some changes. God is telling us in these last days, if we want to endure to the end and be used for his glory and honor, we have to understand the importance of a Sabbath day rest. God's given us this gift. Why don't we use it? Why don't we use it? God requires it. And remember, guys, this is New Testament. This is not Old Testament here. God is still bringing about the principle of a Sabbath day rest. Later on, if you guys want some of my study notes, I can give them to you about the Greek word for rest and why that's important, because it meant Sabbath. In the English language, we only have so few words, so we repeat the word over, like the word love. Well, the same thing with rest. In this context, it's talking about a Sabbath day rest, especially when we get down to verse 9 and below. But here we see at the second part of verse 3, okay, as he said, So I swore in my wrath, they shall not enter my rest, although the works were finished from the foundation of the world. NIV, and yet his work has been finished since the creation of the world. Church, it's important to know from the beginning, God longed for us to rest. He set the example for us to have a Sabbath day rest from the beginning of the world, the foundation of the world. Those works were finished. When God created everything in six days, then he rested. He set the stage for us. Why do we think we have to burn the candle at both ends and be busy, busy all the time? Busy, 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 busy. Doing what? Doing what? Really? Really? Verse 4, for he, God, has spoken in a certain place in the seventh day this way. And God rested on the seventh day from all his works. And again, in this place, they shall not enter my rest. Psalm 95, 11, Genesis 2, 2. Are the place where the writer of Hebrews is going to refer to David and his teaching, the word of God as well as in the creation story, Genesis 2. They shall not enter my rest. And God rested on the seventh day from all his works. And again, in this place, they shall not enter my rest. Verse 4 and verse 5 are powerful verses of the importance of why we must understand the significance of the Sabbath rest to our Lord, to our Savior. Praise be to God. Think about that. Think about what the writer is saying here. He's giving credibility 
He's building the stage, if you will, for prophetic, prophetic warning or prophetic advice for us today in the church. And he says there again in verse 5, and again in this place, they shall not enter by rest. If we don't follow the example of God and rest one day of the week, for me it's Monday. Sunday is not a rest day for me. It's a very busy day for me. Between t- teaching two classes, preaching two sermons, leading worship two services, and visitation in between, it is a long day. But Monday is that rest day for me. And as I said last week, I realized that going seven days a week was a mistake. Realized it was a mistake. God has given wisdom so that when we can carry out the I knew it was God's will for me to teach. And I love what I do. But it would have been out of God's will if I continued it seven days a week as I did last year. Verse number six, since therefore it remains that some must enter it. It still, re- we see that word remains for the second time. We saw it in verse one. We see it again. A Sabbath rest remains. Well, don't just say, well, Jesus is my rest. Surely he is our rest. He is our Sabbath. But this is his word. Surely we can heal on the Sabbath. Surely we can do works for the Lord on the Sabbath. Surely we can take care. We don't have to be legalistic, but we still have to rest. I think this is why so many people, you know, well, I went to Jesus and he gave me rest for what, about two weeks? And then you were right back in the same place of being burnt out again? Or then you come and say, well, pastor, I tried that, and Jesus, he helped me for a few days, but then I got right back in the same place. Why? Because you didn't understand the importance of rest, physically, and a Sabbath rest. You didn't understand. You thought it was just go to the altar, God would recharge you, and you'd leave singing kumbaya, and all your strength would come back. That doesn't work that way. Since, therefore, it remains that some must enter. What is that? That rest That's what the it refers to. NIV says it this way. It still remains that some will enter that rest. And those who formerly had the gospel preached to them did not go in because of their disobedience. What will you choose? Will you enter the Sabbath rest of the Lord? The writer of Hebrews says some will, but some will not. Some will choose to stay disobedient. And you'll wander in the wilderness for 40 years like the Israelites. Complaining because God only gives you bread or manna from heaven. Well, it's just God's will that I just struggle and he just gets me by on oodles and noodles. Right? That's what we say. That's God's will for me. Roman numerals. Roman numerals. Now I'm going into math mode. Roman numerals. Whatever they're called. Ramen noodles. Ramen noodles. That's what we call them. Roman numerals, ramen noodles, same thing. When actually God has so much for us, but we won't do it his way. Instead, as the writer says here, and those to whom it was first preached did not enter because of disobedience, will choose to go that road. I would argue if this was a debate class and ministering to people through 17 years as pastor, some of the greatest and frustrated people and complaining people I've ever been around were some folks who worked hard. And the reason they were so impatient and complaining is because they were exhausted physically, emotionally, and spiritually. And they thought the remedy was, I've just got to do more. The more you do, the more frustrated you get. And then as you get older, expect your health to begin deteriorating. Like in my case, what was happening was my blood pressure was going high, cholesterol was going high, life insurance, they told me that I couldn't get the premium rate anymore. That's what got me in the gym. Our body, do, our body does something around 37 years old, don't it? And then when you cruise on into the 40s and then 50s and then beyond, you realize, yep, Lord, get me home. <laughs> get me home. 
where there's no more aches and pains. But it does something. When I was in my teens and 20s and 30s, I really didn't think about it much. I was actually stunned when the blood work came back and they called me up and said, we can't give you the premium rate. I was stunned. That happened, by the way, two weeks before my 40th birthday. Verse 7, again, God, he designates a certain day, saying in David's, which is Psalm 95. That's what that saying is referring to, Psalm 95. Today, after such a long time, it has been said, today, if you will hear his voice, do not harden your hearts. Today, why is today important? Because today, God is looking for us to decide that the Sabbath rest will be a vital requirement for us. Today, it's an important day. So, well, Pastor, I'll wait. I'll wait. Well, you'll continue to carry the sand in the rock yard. Wet sand, which is much heavier. Dry sand is bad enough. You can sleep without. Wet sand is a mess, at least for me. People like the beach. They don't mind wet sand. But it's a mess to clean up, especially in the bathroom. It gets just so messy. But you know, if we'll, if we'll respond today, Again, he designates a certain day, saying in David, today. Of course, today is the Lord's day. Today is the day in which most of us will choose to have our Sabbath because of our schedule. But will we rest today? Or is something else needing our attention? Soccer, volleyball, shopping day, cleaning. Got to go here. I've got to go there. It's the only time I can do it. Be real careful. Be real careful in making that decision. Be real careful in what we do. I would encourage you all, if you didn't listen last or weren't here last week, to go on Facebook. Listen. If you don't have Facebook, let me know. We have a new software program. Alicia can copy you a CD like that. She can do it very quickly. It takes less than two minutes now with the equipment that we have. So if you don't have a CD, uh, a CD player, I'll preach it again. Just tell me, invite me to your house and have a meatloaf dinner, and I'll preach it to you again. Verse 8. For if Joshua had given them rest, then he would not afterward have spoken of another day. Verse 8 from the NIV. For if Joshua had given them rest, God would not have spoken later about another day. Church, we know it is Joshua that leads the Hebrew people into the promised land. We know for sure, without a shadow of a doubt, if Joshua had not given them rest, they would have lost. You can tell I'm working out. This jacket's too small. If my arms and shoulders get bigger, my waist is getting smaller. Look at that. That keeps, that's crazy. Getting, I'm getting brownie points from my trainer over there so he don't work me too hard. Yeah, buy me a new jacket, brother. No. If Joshua did not have the Hebrew people rest, you can check this out in Scripture. When God said to Joshua, they need to rest, there wouldn't have been another day. You want to know why? Because they would have been devoured and defeated. There would not have been another day to fight. Who did Joshua defeat? When they crossed over, what's the name of the people? Remember, they sent the spies in, and only two came back and said, "Hey, which one of them was Joshua? The other, Caleb. We can be victorious." Who was the enemy? Who was it? Who was occupying the land? Canaanites. If Joshua had not said, "You know what? We still need to rest, so that we can be strong. We still need to honor God." There would not have been another day for them to fight because they would have lost and lost right there. That's how important this rest is. That's how important as a, as a believer it should be for us because guess what? If we don't rest, we might not have another day. Think about that. God needs the strongest and most equipped soldiers he can get, and he needs us rested in these last days, not fatigued and burnt out. He needs us rested in these last days. Verse 9, and this is where the rest emphasis in the Greek 
specifically defines a Sabbath. Therefore remains, therefore, a rest or a Sabbath rest for the people of God. We see remains the third time in this chapter, meaning it hasn't been done away with. It hasn't been set to the left or the right. It hasn't been forgotten or it hasn't been just simply fulfilled in the new covenant. NIV from verse 9 from the NIV, then there, there that remains, then a Sabbath rest for the people of God. NIV even puts the word Sabbath in the translation, which is why I wanted to share it. So you guys didn't think I was just blowing smoke. Again, if you want my notes, just ask me. But church, this is huge. When I see verse 9, I get excited. There remains, therefore, a Sabbath rest for the people of God. It is still there for us today. Why not try it? Well, Pastor, you don't know what I got going on. You mean to tell me you got something more going on than Joshua had? You got more going on in your life than God had? He rested for us. God didn't need the rest after he created everything in six days. He did it for, he rested for us. That's what Jesus declared in Mark 2. Think about that. Think about that. And again, the NIV in verse 9 says, there remains then a Sabbath rest for the people of God. That is each and every one of us. I look forward to tomorrow to rest in the Lord to let him recharge my batteries under our maple tree that is quickly be turning into an orange tree and to rest. It remains the third time. The next time someone comes to you and says, you don't need the Sabbath today, you don't need the honor of the Lord's day, you don't need to rest, send them to Hebrews 4 and say, this is a prophetic warning of God. If we want to enter his rest, we have to rest. It doesn't just go poof. We have to make it a priority. Show me your schedule, I'll show you your priorities. Some of you have your schedules right on your phone. Right on your phone, where are you going to be? You put it all in there because it's so busy. You don't want to double book yourself. I'd advise you to write the word rest in your schedule. Set an alarm to your phone to remind you to rest. Verse 10, we're almost finished. There remains, therefore, a rest for the people of God. Verse 10, for he who has entered his rest has himself also ceased from his works as God did from his. If you will choose to enter this rest, you will stop working just as God did when he rested on the seventh day. When you enter that Sabbath rest, you will cease from working. There is no, I, well, I'll rest while I work. Baloney. You're not going to rest. while I'll rest while I'm watching the football game. No, you won't. You'll be screaming at the TV when the ref makes a bad call. Or it might not even be the on the field stuff will frustrate you. All the political stuff in sports now will really frustrate you. You're not resting. Don't, don't show that. Don't say that. That's not rest. That's not rest. I'm not buying that. And I don't think the Lord will either. For he who has entered his rest has himself also ceased from his works as God did from his. We cease from them. We stop working. Verse 10, for the NIV, for anyone who enters God's rest also rests from his own work, just as God did from his. Why do I give Brandy my phone or the ministry team, whoever may have it? Usually her. People get upset, but I need to rest. Friday, this thing was going off, buzzing like a bee. About 15, eight, my students said, Mr. Thacker, get your phone. Something, something's wrong. I said, no, I can't right now because I'm teaching this class. And the something wrong was really nothing wrong. It was just some superficial stuff that I needed to know about for some reason. By the way, it was the same person. But that's all it takes. How am I going to rest if the phone's buzzing 
15, min- 15 times in literally five minutes. How will I rest when it's buzzing at 2.30 in the morning? I always, before I put my phone in the kitchen at night, it would ring, it would buzz, and the question would be, Pastor, are you up? It's 2 o'clock in the morning. Are you there? That sentence comes along a lot. Are you there? You can't rest. You know what, church? I'll be as bold as to say this. If we're not careful, we may we always talk about addicts to uh, drugs and alcohol and food and pornography and gambling. I tell you right now, I would argue many of us are addicted to this thing. You can't rest when this thing's in your pocket buzzing. All right? Some, that's why I said the word many. Not all, because some of you don't touch these things. I understand that. But you know what? This is just as dangerous as an 18-pack or 20 in a pack of cigarettes. Is it still 20 in a pack of cigarettes? You know, just as dangerous as gambling or pornography. Addiction is addiction. And they all can keep us from resting in the Lord. But lastly, verse 11. Let us therefore be diligent to enter that rest. We have to work hard at this. We have to put it in our schedule. We have to believe first that this is important. Don't let this go in one ear and out the other. Don't let say, well, pastor, it's a new era today. You don't think God knows what he's talking about in these last days and how important rest is? Are we crazy? You know, we, well, I got to go with society. I don't want society. I don't could care less what society thinks. What does God think? The Lord just said, So I swore in my wrath that they shall not enter my rest. I want to be at rest with Jesus. I want to be at peace. I want to be able to understand the signs of the times. I want to be in carrying out the complete gospel that I talked about Sunday night, last Sunday night. We have to be diligent. We have to work hard at this. Let us therefore be diligent to enter that rest. Notice the writer of Hebrews says the responsibility is ours. I can't make you guys believe this just as I can't make you put money in a a box. I can't make you attend a prayer meeting, corporate prayer meeting. I can't. That's baloney, too. We have to take the initiative. We have to first believe and then be diligent to enter that rest. We have to be diligent. But the last part is what's scary. Least anyone fall according to the same example of disobedience. NIV, let us therefore make every effort to enter that rest that no one will fall by following their example of disobedience. Are you setting a good example for yourself as well as those around you? Take inventory. Because the things your kids see you doing, they'll be doing too. And guess what? Until they can drive or have a car themselves, they'll be just as busy carting them around everywhere. Be real careful. Be real careful what we do. Children are watching our every move. Most of you don't know the context of the Scripture. The word is powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword. We know that verse, which is the next verse, but we don't know the context. That verse comes in the context of a Sabbath day rest. And I'm going to read it because I think it's important. For the word of God is living and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the division of soul and spirit and joints and marrow as it is, and, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. And there is no creature hidden from his sight but all things are naked and open to the eyes to, of him to whom we must give an account, which, of course, is referring to the Lord. Guess what? If we're not rested, this word that is sharper than any two-edged sword that is living becomes dull because we're too tired to discern what it says. We love to talk about verse 12, and the power of God's word is sharper than any two-edged sword. It's living, it's powerful, but if you're so exhausted, you can't even read it. Why? Because the moment you lay your head down, you'll be in la-la land. I'm just being real.
That's the context is of Sabbath day rest. That's the context is that we must be healthy and strong and vibrant and alert so we can understand the Word of God. And I can tell you, church, in these last days, if we don't have the Word of God, we're in serious trouble because we don't have a road map. We don't have our, you know, GPS telling us which way to go. We're going to get lost real quick. That's how important this is. That's why it's in that context. Most of you probably had never studied it from that perspective. Most preachers, they just jump to verse 12, give you that one verse, do a topical message, and that's great, and that's wonderful. But what's the context? The context is be alert and enter the rest of God so you can understand his word. But if we go the road of disobedience, expect not to understand his word, expect to be overcome with anxiety and sickness and addiction, All the things that substitute for being in the will of God. When God gave me this message on Tuesday morning of this week, or of last week, five days ago, I really didn't want to preach it. But I knew I had to. I knew I had to bring it in the context in which I have this morning. So that each and every one of you, beyond a shadow of a doubt, can take an inventory of how important a Sabbath rest is to each and every one of us. So I ask, this gift of rest, will you take it or will you leave it? Each of you. Will you take it or will you leave it? The Israelites, they left theirs under Moses. But under Joshua, they didn't leave it. They took it. They rested a day. God gave them victory. And not defeat. Will you open this gift called a Sabbath day rest? while it is in your hands today? Or will you set it down and say, man, I'll open it at Christmas. Christmas may never come this side of the rapture again. Today, make the choice to open the gift of rest. And when you open it, use it. Father, thank you for your word today, Lord. Personally, Lord, I'm glad this message is over. It's been weighing on me for five days. But Lord, your word is your word. Your context is your context. And if we want to have the living word of God that is more powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, we must be alert. We must be rested so we can grasp and understand. And Lord, we must also understand that your fourth commandment still remains, as the writer just boldly declared in these first 11 verses of Hebrews 4. So Lord, I pray right now, if there's someone that's never entered into rest that is found in Jesus Christ. They have never entered into that rest where their soul can be at peace because they know their sins have been forgiven. Jesus, you are the rest. You are the Savior. You are the Messiah. And Lord, if there's someone here today, the invitation to receive Christ goes like this. We first must admit we're a sinner. All of us fall short of the glory of God, and therefore we must admit, Jesus, we need you to blot out our sin with your blood. And therefore we believe, Jesus, that you died on the cross and shed your blood for our sin so that we could be forgiven and restored to a right relationship with God. But Lord, we must also believe that you rose again the third day, proving that you are the Savior of the world. 
Thirdly, Lord, we must confess with our mouth. Lord God, your word declares in Acts 2.21 that whosoever call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Lord God, today, who will confess your name so that their sins can be forgiven and that their name be recorded in your book of life so that they have heaven awaiting them, but they also have peace on this earth. They have the Holy Spirit to help them, to protect them, to lead them and guide them to teach them, and to rebuke them. If that is you, I invite you to come and say, that's me. I'm confessing Christ today. If you're watching on Facebook, write it in the comment section. That's me. I'm confessing Christ today as my Lord and Savior. If you're here, I invite you to come out to the altar right here and confess him just right now before God. I invite you to come. Do not delay. It doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter what matters is Have you been washed in the blood of Jesus Christ through faith? If you're here today and the gift of a Sabbath's rest is being placed in your lap right now. And God, by his grace and mercy, has given you an opportunity, no matter how old or young you are, to open this gift and truly use it for the glory of God. If that is you, And you might be thinking, I don't deserve that, or I don't want to... If God placed that gift in your lap right now through the preaching of His Word and by His grace, and you know full well God wants you to open that gift and use it, I invite you to come and say, God, I'm going to open the gift right here at this altar today. If that's you, step out and come. If God gave you that gift years ago, but you haven't been using it, But God, by his mercy, is placing it back in your hand, saying, Hey, Billy Bob, hey, Peggy Sue, don't you remember I gave you the gift of rest? You don't have to be tormented. You don't have to be sick. You don't have to be frustrated. You don't have to lose patience. You don't have to be a complainer. All these things that give us a warning that we are exhausted spiritually and physically and psychologically and emotionally. God and his love for you is giving you that gift again. If that's you today, I mean, it's one thing to be told the first time about rest because maybe there are people here who have never heard that gift, but you have heard it years ago and it's coming back, but God's giving it to you because he loves you and he wants you to be in his will. Don't let the gifts stay wrapped. I invite you to come and unwrap the gift and use it starting today, right now, if that's you, come. And lastly, if you're here and your flesh is just stirring up in you right now and you're to the point of even saying, well, if I'm disobedient, I'm disobedient. I've got to keep this busy schedule for X, Y, and Z reasons. I encourage you to come and talk about that with the Lord. Don't wait and come to me in a counseling session. Come talk to the Lord now and let him speak to your heart. Let him explain why he's angry when his children do not rest. Let him explain to you the benefits of rest, the health benefits, the emotional benefit, the spiritual benefit, the calling benefit, the equipping benefit. The anointing and favor benefit. God will explain it to you if you'll come talk to him. Don't fume in your seat. Step out and talk to him. God, if you need prayer for any other reason or you need to seek God's face, come. Seek the face of the living God right now while he may be found in Jesus' name.
soul in these trying days when everything appears to be crumbling it is well with our soul that you're still in control and Lord for such a time as this we have been called and Lord God may we worship you vibrantly may we be diligent Lord even in using the gift of rest which is a gift from you so, Lord, we can use our swords that are sharper than any two-edged sword. We can use your word, which is living, without becoming weary and well-doing. Help us, Lord, be good stewards of our schedules. Lord, our schedules we dictate. We're the managers. You give us free will to use our time accordingly. May we be wise in it, Lord, I pray. Bless us now as we go home. Watch over us, protect us, bring rest to our body today. Lord, this is your day, so may we be honoring you with it and truly resting today. But ultimately, Lord, I pray as we continue to draw closer to one another, such as in times of prayer, study, worship, devotion, and holy communion like this here today. More importantly, I pray, Lord, that we will continue to draw closer to you for your word declares in James 4.8. That if we draw nigh or draw near unto you, you will draw near unto us. And Lord, here today, you're really, really close. We love you and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Before you go, just a couple of announcements. Tonight, men's and women's group, 5 o'clock, guys upstairs, ladies downstairs. 6 p.m., going to be preaching on chasing after the stray. Meaning, what happens, if, what, what do we do when a believer gets...